Welcome, everyone. We're glad to have you with us for today's webinar, which is What Good Leadership Looks Like. We know that we have a lot of turnover within our member pools, and we have a lot of turnover at the CEO or the top pool executive role uh, in particular, but not exclusively. And so uh, because there's so much of that leadership turnover, we're really working hard to bring you some content, some ideas, uh, some sort of inspiration to make sure that you are doing what you need to do to be the best possible leader in your pool. And for that advice, we, of course, return to our expert, Steve Troutman. Steve is our 2021 succession planning resident, uh, and he has content today that he's going to share about what good leadership looks like, uh, in particular, in our member pools. So, Steve, I'll turn it right over to you to get us started. Terrific. Yeah. So happy to be back with you all. Uh, looking forward to this today. Uh, so here's the goals that I have for this session. I, I want to uh, tell you what I mean by uh, what good looks like. And we're going to be focusing the content today at the pool director level. Uh, it'll easily scale up or down regardless of your level of leadership. But uh, we're going to start with that as our, our focus today. Uh, and we're going to talk through some of the learnings we got from the staff forum and try to bring home uh, some of that content so that we can give you a practical kind of next steps from that. And uh, we're going to give you some ideas for how to incorporate what good looks like into your, your, your own leadership uh, future. So starting out, you know, honestly, how do you know what good looks like? And, and I, I wanted to give you some thoughts for that as we begin. The truth is that every one of us as leaders uh, has what feels like an endless list of all the things we could be doing, and that can be pretty overwhelming. And so I want you to use this framework to, um, to stop and, and take stock of what you are doing and, and make sure you feel good about that and, and, and take the opportunity to make any changes if that seems like a good idea. So you'll use this framework for a couple of things. Uh, one, I want you to use it to kind of broaden your thinking a little bit. Uh, consider uh, uh, the, making sure that you're thinking about the edges of your job as well as the core of your job. But then I want you to use the framework also to bring it back to a relatively narrow focus. In my experience as an executive and as a, a leader for many decades, um, it, one of the big challenges for us is that we we have so many things we could be doing. It's it's really helpful if we can if we can agree to get the the basics right, if we can get the, the core uh, uh, work done, that usually helps quite a bit. Uh, I also want you to be able to use this framework to guide conversations uh, with your colleagues and uh, with those people that you consider mentors for you. Uh, one of the things that's great about the pooling community is that people are so available to each other. And I've seen this in the conferences I've attended, including the folks who've retired. They're, they're accessible and we're happy to help for the most part. And so uh, this might be a way for you to get feedback uh, using this framework and also to get advice. And then finally, I want you to get really comfortable that you're doing enough. And that's what good means, uh, good enough, uh, so that you, uh, you if you, uh, if you spend as you spend your time, you're you're feeling confident that you're on the right track, and that you can do whatever you're doing sustainably. Uh, you can keep after it over the long haul because your constituents need that, and you want that for yourself as well. So questions. Now we've 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 organized this content in the form of a series of questions that I'll walk through with you very quickly here. I wanna tell you before I show them to you that there's nothing magic about the questions. I made them up and Anna and I went back and forth kind of figuring out what's the right set of questions. So don't worry, uh, don't worry if you don't like the, some of the questions, if you don't like them, delete them, no problem. Uh, if, you, uh, if you feel like there's one missing, I'll give, we'll, we'll both give you some prompts uh, for how you can add some in. But just know that the idea is to have you think and if, if, once you've thought it through, you'll you'll know for yourself and 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 uh, you know kind of what you want your next steps to be. So here's some of the questions that are going to show up. <clears throat> I'll, <clears throat> I'll I'll point out that there's going to be a um, a worksheet available at the end, and so all these questions and all the notes from this will not come to you in the form of the slides, but actually a much more useful worksheet that you'll be able to open up and edit on your own. So we're going to ask you questions like, "What are you reading?" Uh, and that could include periodicals and, and and how often you're reading them, what data you're monitoring, the relationships you're building, who are you learning from, who are you educating, uh, thinking about things like the conferences you're attending and why, uh, what are you writing these days, uh, what are you presenting and and why, 
Uh, we'll also look at um, things like the relationship you have with your governing body. Uh, how do you know whether it's on the right track and uh, whether you're making yourself useful to them and they to you? Uh, what are you doing to pay attention to what's going on that's going to affect your pool's risks and uh, the, the trends that are out there? How are you keeping your thumb on the pulse of what's going on? Um, uh, how do you know that you're a good leader to your team? What, do you, what, should be look, what should you be looking for as indicators of that? Um, let's, let's pause for a second, look at our strategic plan and uh, making sure that it's a, a living, breathing document that is affecting the way we behave on a regular basis. And finally, we're going we're gonna to puzzle out a little bit more about whether this is the right set of questions for you and uh, whether it'll help you determine your good. So uh, to get us going, uh, Anne's going to, Anne, you know, she's the queen of the pool. So we have to, uh, we have to take advantage of all of her knowledge. And it was so fun to pose these questions to her and have her spend a very short amount of time to come up with like content that I consider to be just gold. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to, you, to her. This is what you're going to experience as, a, as an observer of the webinar. Uh, the question, uh, this question we chose of the dozen or so questions that are on the worksheet, we chose a few that we're going to talk about today. The first one we're going to talk about is with whom are you building relationships? I'm going to turn it over to Anne and she's going to talk you through some of that content and then and then we'll go from there. Anne, are you ready? I'm all set. Okay, <laughs> here they go. All right, so uh, Steve said that I took a, a fast pass at trying to answer these questions, sort of standing in the shoes of a pool director and thinking, uh, if I'm in my pool, if I'm new to my role and Steve is posing this question to me, you know, thoughtfully, what am I going to respond? How am I going to answer it? So you'll see all of my answers here. Uh, I won't talk through all of them. The worksheet, uh, you know, is comprised of uh, Steve's answers, my answers, some of the information that we gathered from the staff forum session that we did on the same topic. The two I want to mention here, uh, the first one that I'll mention with whom am I building my relationships, uh, the fourth bullet, the state risk manager, so that they know how we operate. Um, just let me think, twice in the last 10 days, I've had conversations with pools who are not regulated in any way or are not beholden in any way to some state office of insurance or state risk management office or anything else. And yet they are both, both of these pool directors are building relationships with their state risk management officer or the equivalent, their, their would-be regulator. Mm -hmm. And they're doing that really proactively, right? They're looking ahead and thinking, I don't have an obligation now. I don't have a responsibility now. There isn't an accountability, but this is a person who it is really important knows who my pool is and what my pool does. So I'm going to go proactively seek them out, build a relationship, and maybe educate them a little bit about what it is that my pool does and why. Um, so that's one that I would call out. The other one I would call out, I think it's the sixth uh, bullet, underwriters of our three reinsurance and excess partners, two of whom are new. Uh, this is a message that we are hearing loud and clear uh, across all of our pools, that the underwriters you are working with, with your reinsurers, uh, they are changing. There's a fair amount of turnover there as well. So again, thinking ahead of you know, where or two, where are their relationships changing? Where are there people who really need to understand my pool and, and my role in the pool? And how do I go find those people to make those relationships happen? That's fantastic. So, so those who are playing along in your office or at home, uh, this is what you're going to see when you open up the worksheet. And what I want you to remember is that this is the, the notion of good, is that this is a list that that's substantial, but it's not infinite. You know, it's, it's a dozen people or 10 people or 30 people, but it's not a million people. And so it's really good to spend a little bit of time asking yourself, what are the relationships that really matter for me in my role in, in, in this season of my career and of the, the job that I have so that I can really provide a tremendous continuity of service to, the, to our pool constituents? And um, so that's the first one. Let's dive into the second one. Hey, I, I, Steve, I, Steve, before you even go there, back up, would you for a minute? Oh, sure. Um, because one of the things that, that you've talked a lot about that I think is really incredibly valuable, especially for new leaders, like this is an overwhelming list to some degree, right? There, there are a dozen people on this list and that's a lot of meeting time. Uh, for instance, you know, if I'm building a relationship with five direct reports, I might need a one-on-one -on -one with them each week. And that's five hours of my week that are gone. So 
as you're going through these questions, really thinking about, okay, if, if this is my priority list, how much time do I need to be spending? And in yes. what sprint, right? Am I spending weekly time? Am I spending monthly time, quarterly time? What is it? Yeah, that's such a great point. It, it helps you to recognize that it doesn't have to be an hour every single week, uh, to your point. And, um, but what we want to know is, how is my relationship with that person? And how do I know? You know, how do I know that it, it's, it's good enough? Uh, and, and having just having the thought, considering it and asking them sometimes having that conversation, definitely a conversation with your mentors, and your colleagues uh, to help you kind of calibrate that. But that's a great point. Awesome. Here we go to the next one. Uh, so this question, who are you directly or individually educating? So this is a uh, this is the work of uh, so much of your job is to explain to people how to use your services, how to take advantage of what's going on in the marketplace, um, and also to make sure that they're uh, efficient and robust in their understanding of what's going on. And so uh, I asked Anne to think through the, the people who should be on your list of, of educating. And so she'll talk us through those. Yeah, so I picked just two examples here. And Steve, one of the things um, that you, you really um, specified for me, right, is not just um, who are the individuals versus the great big groups, but also who are we educating? Who am I educating in this role as pool director? Who am I educating for? Um, for their benefit, right? Like I have a formal expectation that I teach somebody something or that I help somebody do their job better versus that general communication. Because I, I could have listed like, of course, I'm educating my members and I'm um, trying to provide education to all of my associations that I do business with or that I work with and all of my vendors. So trying to take this really to a narrow scope of who am I individually impacting and making sure that they have what they need to do their jobs. Um, so one example might be that as the pool director, uh, I'm in the best position to really educate and help influence the work of our data analyst. Maybe that data analyst is new. Maybe I'm in the best position to sort of help that person um, learn what they're looking for, figure out how to ask for data, figure out how to massage the data and really dig in in different ways to understand what it is that they're trying to explain. And maybe that data analyst is supporting our reinsurance uh, work. Maybe the data analyst is supporting our risk management work or our mm -hmm. claims work, but really helping that data analyst understand the why of what they're looking for. That's one example. Um, another example, of course, is the governing body. And for many, many pool executives, getting especially new pool executives, getting their um, head around this role and trying to figure out how do I effectively educate my governing body not just generally, but in this case, this example specifically, like, hey, we've got a big reinsurance renewal coming up this year, and I need my governing body to really understand the value of the transaction versus the relationship in reinsurance. So I might do some really targeted education on that front. Yeah, that's fantastic. So you're thinking really about, you know, your strategic plan, what's going to take to execute that, and also the, the operational and tactical plans that you have that are very near term. And you're considering, you know, who am I going to help get, get the skills that they need so that they can, you know, do their part in helping us be successful. It's terrific. Yeah. And Steve, I don't know, right or wrong, again, maybe I'm just Maybe I'm super calendar driven. Uh, we all know that I'm a, a pragmatist to a fault, right? But every time I was answering these, I was in my head, I was translating, like, I'm only putting somebody on this list who I would schedule time with on my calendar. So mm -hmm. this is something effectively that I'm going to translate to my calendar and say, I'm spending an hour this Friday making this phone call. Fantastic. Yeah. And I think that very practical and it makes a lot of sense. And how, many, how much time should I put in and, uh, uh, and what exactly am I teaching them? So, you know, considering what the learning objective is, I always ask, what, what, what do I want to teach them how to do? And uh, that, that really helps me think about how I'm going to use that time efficiently. Awesome. So, so this one is the, you know, the six million dollar question or whatever the number was, the twenty five million dollar question. Uh, you know, how do I know I'm basically how do I know I'm a good leader for my pool? And uh, those of us who were raised uh, with a little guilt in our lives, we, uh, we we always wonder: is it possible to be good enough? You know, and I think that's so part of why we're here is to have the conversation to say, let's find some reasonable metrics, some reasonable uh, ways, benchmarks that we can use to know whether we're a good enough leader. So let's let Anne jump in on that as well. So I don't, 
I don't have the worksheet open in front of me, but I think part of the sample answers to this question when people go look, like some of this is more metric driven. So I think one of the very first prompts, Steve, that you came out with, right? What indications do you have that you're a good leader? You know, maybe one of the early answers would be um, turnover or retention of staff, right? Yeah. Cer certainly that's a, a measurement of leadership. Um, but what I was trying to do here, I mean, there are some, some quantifiable indicators but there are also some qualitative indicators, and I tried to capture sort of the two ends of the spectrum. One, that your governing body knows enough to ask good questions. They're not going to be experts. They shouldn't be experts in everything that you do as the leader or that the pool does on the whole, but they should have enough information. They should have enough familiarity. They should be educated enough by you as their leader that they can ask insightful questions and that they can push you to maybe think in some different ways or um, to make sure that you're answering everything so that they can fulfill their, their fiduciary obligations. So one end of the spectrum is that that governing body is, is asking you questions, feels comfortable asking you questions, doesn't feel like they're somehow you know, stepping on your toes or uh, getting too far in the weeds just because they're asking for some additional explanation and additional information. That's one end. On the other end, uh, of course, the staff team, you, it's not just about turnover, it's not just about changeover, it's about how they're doing their jobs. Uh, and knowing that everybody's going to make mistakes and people are going to do things um, not quite right all the time, but that those bad decisions, even if there are bad decisions, um, they're still with the right mindset, which is putting members first. So we can't have the expectation that everybody's going to execute perfectly on everything all of the time. That that isn't a reflection of them or of you as a leader necessarily, but that ultimately they're making decisions for the right reason, that they're putting the members first and that you see that play out time and time again. Uh, that means that you've done your job in terms of uh, embedding that member first culture. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And, and, you know, this is just one of those questions like the rest that it's so great to show this to other people. Be transparent about the fact that you're working through this notion of what good looks like as a leader and ask for guidance on this. What, what, do, what do your colleagues and your mentors think about this? Because they're going to help you to, to shape the bullets. And it's a, it's a framework also for them to give you feedback on things that are going well and things that could use some work. Awesome. Ready for the next one? So uh, what, one of the things, you know, as I've come to understand pooling, one of the things I'm most impressed by is how much you have to hold in your heads about what's going on in the world. And uh, so that you can see around the corner and you can figure out what, uh, what is a risk that you hadn't even thought of before. And I, I've heard so many amazing stories. So I wanted to put this in there as, uh, to make sure that we're continuing that culture uh, and, uh, and that you all have ways that you can say that you're paying attention to the trends uh, in very, very specific ways. So, and jump in on this one. Yeah, so the first uh, example answer is just, it's again, for me, it's a little bit of um, realism when it comes to calendar management, right? Our, our days, our weeks, our months get really tied up with board meetings and staff one-on-ones and all of the member meetings and obligations and reinsurance that we have to go do. Um, those non-pool meetings, though, are our opportunity to take, to take a step outside of uh, kind of our common practices, our common meetings, and make sure that we're listening to all of the other places where our members might be gathered and talking. So maybe it's an association meeting, uh, maybe it's you know some other sort of government finance officers meeting or whatever it might be, places where your members are, are uh, but you may not normally be. So getting a chance to get out and get to some of those non-pool meetings and listen for what they're talking about when they're not talking about pool things. Um, the second bullet, come straight out of our, our session at Staff Forum, Steve, and, and you'll remember, you know, mm. we were kind of all um, brainstorming. What are you reading? What are you looking at? Um, how do you trend spot? And it it was really great. I wrote down a lot of ideas, but it, it kept uh, going up and up and up a level. You know, somebody said Harvard Business Review and somebody else said, I'm reading the Wall Street Journal to see what the latest financial markets are doing. And somebody else, you know, had another answer from some uh, actuarial society report, whatever it is. And um, we kind of laughed when we said, you know, you got to take some time to look at TikTok or Instagram or whatever today's um, social media sort of pop culture of choice might be. 
uh, just to make sure that you're you're not getting so focused on all the day-to-day -day of pooling um, mm -hmm. or all the details of pooling that you lose sight of the bigger issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, it's a uniquely interesting. The stories you told there were super interesting, and and uh, and uh, it takes it out of the academic and brings it down to earth, and uh, that's that's really legit. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, uh, I th so I'm going to take this one, um, Anne, in the worksheet, Anne answered this question, so there's going to be a handful of bullets here, but I wanted to give you some of my thoughts about this notion of what is the, what is the right set of questions, what's the magic for the questions. Um, so one of my thoughts on, on you know, uh, finding the right question is to look, look for good in the things that aren't going well. So uh, I, I think, uh, you, for example, uh, where are you wasting your time? Do you, where do you feel like you're spending too much time, for example? Um, uh, what relationships have created uh, noise for you where you've had to put out fires, for example? Um, so so spend, put your feet up every once in a while, look back on the last week, two weeks, three weeks, and look for really specific patterns that you see in, you know, in your calendar or uh, who's been in your office face-to-face um, -face or on the phone. That'll help you find uh, some, some place to spend some of your time. Specifically looking at your calendar will, will give you those patterns, as I mentioned. And uh, I, I find it really surprising. You can literally count how many hours you put into any one of those relationships because they show up in your calendar. Most of you are booked literally every hour of every day. And so when that's the case, you know, you can pay some attention via the patterns you see in your calendar. Um, uh, asking, as I've mentioned a number of times, asking to talk to your uh, colleagues and mentors and have, have them look at the questions, have them help you think about the ones that, that are missing. And then kind of in summary, I'll, I'll um, use the um, use this list to delete things from your calendar, especially meetings that are coming up. Stop going to some of the meetings that you've been going to on a regular basis. Stop spending time with some of the people that you're spending too much time with. And that's going to be one of the ways that you can find time to be able to do more of what you know is a higher priority. So the tyranny of the of the urgent, I think, is what it's called sometimes when we're we're being driven to do things that feel critical and yet sometimes they're not very strategic. So we as leaders need to be selective and pay some some attention to that. And do you want to add anything to this one? I, that's a that, that was a surprise question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it uh, this this list played very nicely to my calendar driven pragmatic heart. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Perfect. Okay, so let's go to the wrap up. Uh, Steph has put together a, the, uh, uh, a website spot for you so that you can find the worksheet. You're going to find a Word document. It's got some brief explanation at the top. And then it's going to be the, all the questions with Anne's answers. And uh, my recommendation then is that you open it up, save a copy for yourself, uh, share it around, um, and then just edit it. So edit the questions, edit the answers. Uh, once you have your version of it that feels like it's your good, then start to share it around. Um, uh, I, you'll, it'll help you to hold yourself accountable to some of the changes that you've got to make. You'll get feedback from people that are going to be interested in the conversation. Um, you can use it in a staff meeting if you're the big boss and, and want to use it as a discussion point for that. Bring up one question per week and spend six minutes on it and see what happens when people talk about it, kind of the way we did at the staff forum. And then reassess once in a while. So put it on your calendar three months from the day you save it to open it up again and, uh, and pat yourself on the back because you probably will have made some improvements. Uh, and uh, also reassess whether you need to make any changes because of what's happened in the last three months. And, uh, and ultimately, this is a great place to set some professional development goals. When you, some of the answers are going to be uh, outside of your current skill set. Building a relationship with uh, some, some member of an elected official might be something that you've never done before. And, uh, and don't be daunted by that. Just consider that an opportunity and then use the resources that A Group gives you, plus the, the amazing community in the pool, pooling community uh, to, to find somebody who can give you some guidance on how to get that done. So that's that's what I have. Uh, this is really fun being back again with you, Anne. Uh, anything else you want to say to wrap us up? Yeah, two, two things. Um, one, I'm going to underscore again that that worksheet, the starting answers, uh, what Steve said was, you know, open it up, save a copy and overwrite it. Uh, we we always practice on the mentality that it is easier to edit than it is to write. So we're not giving you those answers as the be all end all. Uh, you shouldn't just take it and copy it. 
uh, what you should do is, is use it to just provoke your own thoughts, uh, to prompt your own thinking about things and to edit over it, whatever is most appropriate in your pool and for your role. Um, so that's the first thing, uh, edit, please, those that worksheet that we provided. The second thing uh, really is just to say thank you again to you, Steve. Um, you do such a great job of always giving us sort of the, the practical, simple enough advice and just boiling it down to something that anyone can follow. Uh, and we really appreciate the time and effort that you put into doing that for us because it makes it super easy for all of us to follow. My so, pleasure. I'm, so, I'm very committed to your mission. I, I love what you guys do and I'm grateful for it. As a yes. citizen of the world, you guys, you guys are <laughs> going on. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks again, everyone. <laughs>